G'day fellas. Welcome to another video on Age of Empires 4. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do the absolute best early English longbow rush that you can possibly do. So let's get straight into it. Let's talk about exactly what's happening here. So the first thing that I'm doing, I'm making sure that as I'm entering into the game, I'm selecting my town center and I'm training villages. That's the very first thing. Get as many in queue as you can. Second thing, move your villages onto your starting sheep. All six of them straight over to the starting sheep. From there, you're going to send your scout out around the map. And then finally, you're going to send your town center out towards the gold mine. So there's a fair bit to do as soon as you get into the game. But once you've done that, then it, it sort of settles down a little bit. So the first villager that goes out to the gold mine is going to build that mining camp. And then it's going to go onto gold. The second villager that's going to go out to the gold mine is going to build a house. And then it's going to go onto the, the uh, gold as well. From there, you're going to reallocate your town center back to the sheep. So now I've got six villagers on food, and I'm about to have a second villager over on gold. Now, keep in mind that even though right now, or just previously, it said 10 out of 10 for my population, your population, you, you won't uh, pr uh, stop making villages or units, even if you're 10 out of 10. It's only when that unit completes, and technically you should be 11 out of 10, it will go all the way through and wait at the end. Then as soon as your house is finished, then it will pop out that 11th villager immediately. So what I'm doing is using that extra time just to have my villager out there. I hope I've explained that well. So now that we've got eight villagers on food, two villagers on gold, what we're going to do is we're going to begin transitioning over onto wood from here. So our first villager goes out, going to create a lumber camp up against the wood line, try and get heaps of surface area there for our lumber camp. It's really important that you try not to get it on the corner. You want to try and get it in the trees as close as you can. It can be a little bit difficult. And we're going to continue rallying out from the town center out to the lumber camp. Now, you'll note that I am hovering over the gold in the gold mine. This is what I'm going to be using to determine when I need to pull my villagers off gold. Ideally, you want to be gathering only 100 gold with your starting villagers. You can see that we are getting close onto it. I think I do actually over macro just a little bit here. And that's okay. I've also sent two villagers out to go build the forward, which is going to be our wonder. We're going to do a forward wonder. So now we've got all that gold that we need to age up. We're just waiting on the food, which is about to come in now. And our villagers are out moving around on the map. Just remember, the longer that they walk, the closer it gets to the enemy. So now dropping down that council hall at 2 minutes 30. We're going to pull two villagers off. Make sure that we cash in our villagers. Uh, they've, they're carrying food, so make sure we shift click them onto the town center and then take them out over onto the landmark. So that's going to be a total of four villages that we've got over on the landmark. From here, we've got six villages that are on food. Two of them have come off and the, re the rest are remaining on wood at this point. We're going to transition one more villager over to food. So you have seven on food. And then from there, all the rest are going to go to wood. And then that way we're going to be able to balance our economy once we get up into the second age. Because the idea is that we want to idle our opponent as much as possible. So what we're doing now is I'm now scouting out the opponent's base. So I've gone and gotten my sheep. I brought them back into my town center. Now I'm looking at my opponent's base. I'm looking at where their resources are, what angles I want to be attacking them from. I want to be spotting out where are their resources, where are they going to be vulnerable. At the same time, I'm dropping a house behind this in my uh, back next to my town center. It's not too important when it comes to houses where exactly you put them. Ideally, you want to put them around your uh, mining camps and your lumber camps because those buildings typically, you know, they're going to have space that's unoccupied around them. So you want to make sure that you're using that space as best you can. So now that we've got the four villages out there building up the council hall, it's going to be building a lot faster than if you've got two or three villages on there. The return that you'll get, essentially it's building twice as fast than if you have one villager on there. So four villages is twice as fast. Ten villages is four times as fast. But ten villages is a little bit of overkill. I wouldn't advise doing that. So at this point, you can see that we're floating up plenty of resources. All of these resources are going to be going into longbows. It's four minutes, 15. We're aging up to the second age. And those villages, well, 418, not a bad time. Those villages now are going to go and build that mill up on a deer hunt. Uh, and our... Our uh, council hall is going to begin training longbows and we're rallying the longbows directly to the opponent's base. We're not mucking around. Don't wait for two. Don't wait for three. Go straight in. You want to get them off gold, get them off berries, get them what, off whatever resource you can. And behind this, as you can see, the economy is very easy to macro because we're just continuing to rally our town center towards that wood line. And at the same time, we've got those four villages that have gone up to the north on the minimap. You can see them down in the corner. They are on that deer hunt. Now we're going to begin applying pressure to the opponent. So ideally what we want to do, we check the gold mine. You can see they've just got enough gold to age up, okay? So 
uh, normally if, if they've got 100 gold, it's going to be enough. So we know that there's going to be an age up in queue somewhere. They've probably only recently got their age up in queue or going to have it down very soon. Keep in mind, we're still pretty early in the game. This rush hits before five minutes in the game. So it's, it's very early, very quick. At the same time, avoid going underneath the town center. The town center does a lot of damage to your longbows. Even though your longbows have got a long range, the town center does actually outrange them in the early game. So be careful of that. You can see my longbow there taking quite a bit of damage. Uh, so making very, making sure that uh, I don't lose any more health on the longbow. I want to sort of angle down around the south of the base towards that lumber camp. And what's going to happen is you're going to begin building up more and more longbows as the game goes on. So at this point, you can see the longbow mass is beginning to build. We've got four down here, five, about to be five, down to the south of the base. I noticed that the wonder is going up now. He's built this wonder a little bit out of place, I would say. Uh, do mind your own longbows as well. If you right-click on a settler, and then that settler goes underneath the town center, the longbows will follow it. So you do have to be careful. But now focusing down the villagers that are building the wonder. It's really, really key. I actually played a game last night on stream where I did this exact same rush. And my enemy, well, let's just say they weren't very fortunate when the longbows hit. Let's take a look and see exactly what happened. Oh, it's not up. Oh, it's not up. Oh, this is bad. Oh, this is bad. Oh, this is bad, buddy. Oh, this is not good for you. Oh, this is not good for you, buddy. Oh, that's awkward. Oh, lol crap. Thought it was finished. Oh, damn. GG! <laughs> oh, damn! So as you can see from that clip, it's incredibly important that my enemy here gets up this wonder as quickly as possible. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward a little bit because what happens in this game is I continue just picking off more villagers and it gets to the point where my enemy has no villagers left. So let's move forward to the end of the game now. So it becomes evident that my enemy is not willing to really give up super duper easy despite losing almost all of their villagers. So I determined that I'm going to need to siege down my enemy. Now, unfortunately, my enemy does resign before I'm actually able to put my plans into place. But I'm going to show you exactly what that looks like. So first and foremost, you're going to be dropping down a blacksmith in your base. From there, you're going to be researching the technology Siege Engineering, which enables your melee and ranged infantry to construct out on the battlefield both siege towers and battering rams. Once the tech has been researched, they do actually take quite a while to construct out on the battlefield, so it's important that you get as many longbows as you can constructing the battering rams. Then, once you've built up a decent amount, maybe two, maybe three, you can begin to push into the enemy's base. Keep in mind that villagers will do torch damage against them, so you have to be very careful about leaving your battering rams alone. From there, once you've knocked down the capital town center of your enemy, as well as any landmarks that they use to age up, congratulations, you won the game. Well, fellas, if you've enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like. If you think I missed something, make sure you leave a comment. And most importantly, if you're interested in seeing more Age of Empires 4 content, make sure you hit the subscribe button because there is plenty more content coming out on this channel. Over the next few weeks, you can expect to see build order guides, casted games from the absolute best players in Age of Empires 4, and deep dive breakdowns of Age of Empires 4 mechanics. So if that interests you, don't forget to hit subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one.